Okay, so I think this is the first unboxing that we've ever done on this channel. And this is of a Zexel, or I don't know exactly how you say it, 8 or 5 port managed switch. Model number GS1200-5. Now, we use our the larger brother, the 8 port version of this, which actually supports two 10 gigabit net ethernet connections in our home lab here at Virtualize Everything. But I'm setting up a little bit smaller of a network for another one of my places to use over the winter. And where we're gonna be doing mostly Wi-Fi throughout that entire place, this is the perfect solution for allowing us to use VLANs and manage our traffic with a PF Sense router without having to have the whole home lab setup that we have here at the Virtualize Everything office. So today, I haven't yet ever done an unboxing and I thought it might be cool to actually do an unboxing of this particular switch. As overall, I love this brand and I find them great bargain for the price. So we're here and this is ordered off Amazon and it's a really nice solid box. First impressions of the box. So opening it up and I have cut the plastic lid off, we find the book and some directions. And if you've done with, dealt with electronics recently, you know it's actually kind of nice just to even see paper literature as most of the time you have to download this literature. So although it doesn't actually add to the quality, this is a nice touch. It shows the company still cares about not making you track down literature on using their product. Okay, so then we're going to actually see the switch here and it's actually really small, nice and compact. And it's gonna be really nice to Check out the web interface here after we set it up. And it's also wrapped in a bag. Now it's not a static protected bag, but this device does have a metal housing and not a plastic one. And it's actually following like even the same texture as some of the Netgear, the older Netgear switches. But if you were to pick up a managed Netgear switch, that would be far pricier than the sub $30 price of this particular managed switch. And if you don't know, managed switches allow you to use like VLAN and do some other traffic shaping. And they also can fix certain problems in themselves without you even having to look at it. So sometimes like if you get a loop back error or something like that, which if you guys know what you're doing with a network, you'll probably never get. But in certain scenarios, you can get things like that. And a managed switch will actually work through it sometimes and you won't have the problem. So it won't shut down your entire network. So moving on in the box, we have a piece of filler cardboard, but that stops the power supply, which has its own nice box. It's not just shoved in a piece of plastic and shoved in there. And inside of this, you can see the power supply is fairly nicely packed. And it's a good solid plastic case with some texture. And you know, it's a power supply, right? But it, again, it feels good. It feels like it's a good quality. So I'm really looking forward to trying out this product and trying out the web. Right, so we're here at the GS1200-5 switch web interface. But before we take a look at what the interface looks like to conclude this unboxing video, Let's take a look and see how we actually logged into it with this Mac because there is some configuration that needs to be done. So the first thing that we need to know with at least my Mac is that we need an external uh, USB, not USB to Ethernet adapter that so that we can take and run an Ethernet cable to port number one. And then we plug the switch into power. So with that being said, the next thing we need to do is actually come up here to our Wi-Fi and hit this switch here and turn it off. With our Wi-Fi off, we can go to settings and then go to the networking settings and we can select our USB to Ethernet adapter just as I've done here. And then your configure IPv4 setting needs to be changed from use DHCP to manual. So we can manually assign an IP address to this computer. And because I hadn't initially opened 
the directions that came with this particular switch, I had originally believed the switch was at 192.168.1.1 because that's what my larger switch came configured to. So I set my system to 192.168.1.2. So I was in the same IP range as my switch. As it turns out, that didn't need to happen because my switch is actually pre-configured with an IP address of 192.168.1.3. Luckily, it wasn't dot two. And here, now that we've entered that into the URL of our web browser, we're asked for a password. The default password for this switch as it comes out of the box is 1234, and then we can hit sign in. Now, we're initially asked for a password, but we're gonna give it a password, and it doesn't like our password. And hit apply. All right, so here's what the Switch's web interface looks like, and you can see we're talking to the Switch on port number one at gigabit speeds. All right, so port configuration here, and it looks like we can set duplex or speed limiting on each of the ports, as well as flow control, which I assume flow control has something to do with QoS. Maybe we'll find that out later on, but that's kind of interesting. And here's the loop prevention or loop detection that I talked about that are features inside of most smart switches, which makes them able to solve some errors on their own. And storm control, I think this is if you were having like Bolt packets broadcasted over your network or whatnot, but that's kind of cool to know about. VLANs, which is what we'll be actually using this switch for. And as we found out in a previous video with one of these switches, if you're bringing in untagged traffic, we need to set the VLAN ID here for that. And then we can set tagged or untagged traffic. And you want to note here that we're pre-configured at VLAN 1. So your management web interface only comes up on VLAN 1. So if we wanted to try to log into this interface on say VLAN 2 for management reasons, that doesn't happen. But when we're designing our network and using this switch, we definitely need to be aware that VLAN 1, at least for this switch, is gonna be a management VLAN. So we may want to steer traffic away from that particular VLAN so that our traffic doesn't get interfered with, with maintenance traffic. And we also probably want to assign any open ports here on the VLAN ID to something like a VLAN of 99. So that way somebody can't just walk up to this switch, plug a device in, and try to configure it or start configuring it. It's just another added step for controlling security on your network. Anyways, moving on, we have a tab for link aggregation that we could set up, and it looks like ports three and four are used for that. And it looks like we have a couple of different algorithms for that link aggregation as well. And we have mirroring, so we can port mirror. And this could be ha helpful if you're running something like Wireshark or something similar on a particular port. So all the traffic that goes through this switch will actually get sent to one particular port so that you can look at your traffic or whatnot. Because as you know, a switch sends only the traffic to the port of the IP address of the system that it's intended for. So it Unlike a hub, it won't send it out to all ports. So if you're trying to watch your traffic or monitor it for security reasons, and you don't have port mirroring on, then that traffic won't get sent over to your device that you're watching the traffic on. Here's QoS, which stands for quality of service. And it looks like we can set priorities via the port weight here. So we can weigh the ports as heavy or as weak as possible, and we can move them around. It's kind of interesting. I've not seen QoS set up this way. I don't think I looked at it on the bigger one, but it's probably the same. But it kind of makes sense. So at the switch level, we want to prioritize traffic from one system over another one. We're not really looking at types of traffic like we possibly would in say a router or a firewall. So it makes sense, but we do have options 
for quality of service, prioritization of traffic flow, and we have an IP, IG MP snooping, which I've never, never dealt with, but it looks like it's actually enabled by default, and we have it set to auto for the router port, by default, but it looks like we could configure it for one of the other ports if we wanted to. Kind of interesting. We can also check a box that's called unknown multicast. I don't know, we'll have to look into that a little bit later. Oh, cool note. While link aggregation is enabled, port 3 and 4 can't send static, uh, can't be set as static route ports. Okay, good to know. And here's our management settings. So we can change our password, change our IP address, and our gateway configurations for this switch. We can change your DHCP. So it looks like we can actually enable this switch to act as a DHCP server, or we can disable it. It's kind of cool. Or maybe it's not a DHCP server. Maybe rather it's so that we can have DHCP be assigned for an IP address. So an IP address wouldn't be static. So in this configuration, we have 192.168.1.3, and that is a static IP address. It's not going to change. But if we enable this, that's probably what will happen. The IP address will actually change. So it'll change to whatever your router assigns that to. I don't particularly think that's a great idea on a managed switch because where's your management console in outer space? But maybe there's some solutions for it or maybe you want a particular DHCP server to assign a static IP address. I I'm not entirely sure why you might want that, but I'm sure there's some use cases. Management VID, so it looks like this version of the firmware does allow you to change the VLAN that your management is on. 802.11.3.az is disabled, and it looks like we have a spot where we can make backups so we can download our preset configurations and store them for later or maybe port them into other devices if we have multiple of these devices to set up. And it does look like we can do a firmware upgrade. So maybe here in a few minutes, I might check in to see if we can actually upgrade this GS1200-5 unit to a newer firmware. So with that, I think this concludes our unboxing and web interface introductory video. And maybe we may add on the framework. I'm going to head, turn my Wi-Fi back on and I search this particular GS1200-5 device. And I, I was able to go through their website and find downloads. And at our downloads section, we get a bunch of information, including user guides and certifications and stuff but here at firmware you can see that our newest most up-to-date firmware version is actually 2.0 right here with the ABM E.1 not quite sure what that means but that came out in October 13th of 2021 and after I moved around and actually went back to our main system page I found a firmware version pre-installed a version 2.0 ABKM.1. So it looks like this device actually came out with the newest version of the firmware right from the box. And really judging, well, this firmware is about a year old. And we can see that there had been a initial release in November 9th of 2020. So I would say that relatively, it looks like this firmware is still being maintained. I mean, it is a year old, so it's hard to tell, but that is something that, especially with smart devices, that you want to be aware of, because if you're not, a, if you're not actively being penetrated testing and audited, and firmware is not being released for security vulnerabilities, if some are found in your device, then you're at a little bit greater of a risk. Now, now, for the home user or the home app, especially at the sub $30 price point that this particular unit is at, maybe it's worth a little bit more risk. You are setting behind a NAT or firewall of some sort, but these are things to be aware of. So at this point, I'd say 
We're definitely still in the not the alarmist zone, at least for me. I'm not super alarmed by a year-old firmware update on a Switch like this, but I definitely say it's something to be weary of. Anyways, I'm going to conclude this video, and have a good night.